Welcome to another edition of Tim Talks Disciple Making. Tim Talks Disciple Making are short, poignant conversations and questions related to obeying Jesus' command to go into the world and make disciples of all nations, basically becoming a disciple maker, someone who makes a disciple who will make a disciple. In past uh, Tim Talks, I've looked at questions or principles from the Bible aligned with Jesus' teaching. But today I want to get much more personal and tell you of my own experience, my testimony as it were, related to my experience in disciple making. It was back uh, nine months ago in February of this year that the Lord confronted me and convicted me of the lack of fruitfulness in my life related to making a disciple who would then go on to make another disciple. Uh, we all know what a family tree looks like and I would have no problem plotting out the various generations of the Beatle family tree. But when it came to my own life in terms of disciple making and fruitfulness in this regard, I had to admit quite embarrassingly that my disciple making family tree looked little more than a telephone pole. That's embarrassing to say, but I'm just being honest. Uh, I wasn't actively in any relationships with the expressed intent of leading someone uh, to become mature in their faith to the point that they would go and disciple another person in the same way. So on February the 21st, I wrote an email to my pastor, Pastor Ian. Uh, I said, Ian, I'm not a very good church member because of my ministry. I'm on the road most weekends. You get my tithe, but you don't see me very often. Can you find me two or three men who I could enter into a discipling relationship with, with the express intent that at some time down the road, uh, we would all go and find others to do the same thing. Well, it took several weeks, but finally uh, I got a call from another staff member who said, Tim, we found you one guy. And I said, are you serious? In a large church, you found me one guy? However, uh, the Holy Spirit had been working, and as Ian had passed my email throughout the staff, two other staff members were convicted by the Spirit in terms of the fruitlessness, in terms of disciple-making in their life. And they wanted to join as well. So uh, in April of this past year, we formed a disciple making huddle. Uh, the three guys I now meet with every single month, uh, Jerry, Brad, and Jesse, we're all learning together as it were how to become disciple makers uh, with the expressed intent that at some time down the road we'll go and do this again. Now please understand, <laughs> this is a journey that I haven't really uh, traveled before with any sense of expertise. Uh, however, I had a heart full of passion and the prodding of the Holy Spirit in my life to enter into this relationship. And so like Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11 uh, verse 1, he says, follow me as I follow the example of Christ. That's all I had to offer at this point. I started digging into the scriptures, the gospels to see how Jesus engaged and called his disciples and then led them to the point that he commissioned them as well. And so over the months when the four of us meet, uh, we first of all just spoke about how did we end up being mature Christians without any legacy of disciple making. We also looked at the busyness of the local church. We were all doing really good work in the church. However, none of that work was leading us to become disciple makers. And so we've done some reading, uh, Dawson Trotman's article, Born to Reproduce, a little book by Norman Grubb called Continuous Revival, and more recently a book called The Jesus-Shaped Life, in which over the last few months we've learned so much about our identity in Jesus, about God's covenantal love, uh, about uh, now our authority as believers to embrace what God has for us in terms of going into the world and making disciples that make disciples. So we are at the point now that we're looking ahead to next April, a year after we started meeting, and we're gonna go and find three other guys each, which means there'll be now 16 of us, to replicate this work that the Lord is doing in our lives. We're, we're sort of going after the low hanging fruit because we believe there's dozens and dozens of people sitting in the church who some would consider uh, mature in their faith. However, none of us have been making disciples that make disciples. Uh, this is not a church program. This is actually just following Jesus in the example and the call in his life. At some point, those that we disciple, because right now, 
I'm not a disciple maker yet. I'm just meeting with three guys and we're talking about it. But next April, I pray by uh, the moving of the Holy Spirit that we will all then engage in other relationships. And at that point, I will become a disciple maker because Jerry, uh, Brad and Jesse have gone and found others that they're doing the same thing. And then two years later, our prayer is that all those that were discipling to become disciple makers will go and do the same thing as well. So this has been my experience. Uh, I challenge you in these days uh, to look at your own life in terms of disciple making, not in terms of your busyness in the church or commitment to Christ. We don't deny those. But when Jesus called his disciples and then commissioned them with all authority in heaven and earth to go into the world and make disciples who will make disciples, uh, what does your disciple making family tree look like today? May God uh, speak to your heart in these days as we continue this conversation of becoming disciple makers in Jesus Christ. Now here are some disciple making questions for you to consider and digest based on this Tim talk on disciple making.